If that doesn't get you going, I don't know what will. Well, maybe a little of this. This is coffee. <laughs> Welcome, everyone, to St. Mark's. Today is the day of Pentecost. It's Memorial Day weekend, the official beginning of summer. How exciting is that? Hopefully, winter will stay farther away. Um, next Sunday, we have confirmation. VBS was a big success this week. No drama. A few tears in the beginning, but the little ones by Thursday were running up to the front, not even saying goodbye to mom. They were really excited to be here, so it was pretty awesome to see this. Uh, Friday and Saturday, I will be at Synod Assembly in Kearney. Confirmation coming up with Sunday at 9.30. Let's see. Um, there is an announcement. Pastor Deb Valentine, who was our interim minister before I came is retiring, so if you would like to send any cards or whatever, let Michaela and I know, we can forward them to her. Um, and then today, all of our hymns are going to be out of the Bob hymnal, so they will not be on the screen, so you'll have to actually use a hymnal. I think it's good every now and then to use a book so we can famili familiarize ourselves with them. Our final hymn, though, is an insert, so we will sing that. Um, are there any announcements, anything to share? If not, please stand for our call to worship. We worship this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Spirit is here among us, within us, around us, and between us. The Spirit is here, strengthening us, bringing courage and faith. The Spirit is here moving us, making us sing and praise. The Spirit is here. May we feel the Spirit as we gather. May we be fed by the Spirit's fiery strength. May we be emboldened by the Spirit's powerful wind. We gather in the Spirit's arm to be nurtured as we worship. And may our worship fill us with the Spirit as we go back into our daily lives. If we confess our sin... God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from every wrong. God has promised forgiveness to all who truly repent, turn to Christ in faith, and themselves are forgiving. Let us, for, let us confess our sins. Merciful God, we have sinned in what we have thought, in what we have said, in what we have done, in what we have not done. We have sinned in ignorance and weakness, and by our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry. We repent and turn to you. Forgive us and renew our lives to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Through the cross of Christ, God have mercy on you, pardon you and set you free. Know that you are forgiven and be at peace. God strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty God, at the Feast of Pentecost, you sent your Holy Spirit to the disciples, filling them with joy and boldness to preach the gospel. Send us out in the power of the same Spirit to witness to you your redeeming love and draw all people to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. Good morning. Good morning. Our, our first reading is from the book of Acts. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all of these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear, each of us, in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another and sneering, What does this mean? They're filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, even upon my slaves, both men and women. In those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our psalm of the day is from Psalm 104. Please read responsibly. How manifold are your works, O Lord! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the sea. There go the ships to and fro, and Leviathan, which you made for the sport of it. You give it to them, they gather it, you open your hand, and they are filled with good things. You send forth your spirit, and they are created, and so you renew the face of the earth. You look at the earth and it trembles. You touch the mountains and they smoke. I 
May these words of mine please God. I will rejoice in the Lord. Our second reading is from the book of 1 Corinthians. No one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Now, there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of service, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the last day of the festival of booths, the great day, while Jesus was standing in the temple, he cried out, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me, and let the one who believes in me drink. As the scripture has said, Out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. Now he said this about the Spirit, which believers in him were to receive. For as yet there was no Spirit, because Jesus was not yet glorified. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. It was about seven years ago, maybe eight, I started my 10-week internship at a hospital as a hospital chaplain in Brooklyn, New York, in Brooklyn's only level one trauma center. I had a week of orientation. We were given our floors and departments. I was given surgical ICU and step down. Now, just so you have an idea, I had no idea what I was doing. No matter how much orientation you could have been given, I wasn't prepared for what I was about to experience 40 hours a week, 10 hours a week, for the next two and a half months. I have never spent time in a hospital as a patient. It had been 20 years since I even stepped foot in a hospital. I didn't want to be there. I hated the smell. I hated being surrounded by all the sickness, the injuries, the machinery, you know, that beeping, the air of despair. No one wants to be in a hospital, and least of all, me. But I was required to do this internship and part of the ordination candidacy process, so I had no idea. By the end of my internship, I loved doing hospital chaplaincy. I even volunteered to wear a pager and respond to trauma pages in the emergency department, to respond to cardiac arrest and breathing problem incidents. Now, I know my call isn't isn't for hospital chaplaincy, but I know I can be a chaplain to my church. So how did I get to the point of 
loving hospital chaplaincy. Well, it didn't happen overnight for sure. It wasn't revealed to me until near the end of my internship, probably the seventh or eighth week. But it was a series of incidents and experiences that led me to that point. And my first experience happened my first week. And of course, it happened at the end of the day, just as I was getting ready to leave. Never answer the phone when you're about to go out the door. We were, all, we were all in the chaplaincy office and the phone rang. A nurse from my floor requested a chaplain. It was time for a patient to be taken off a ventilator, to be taken off life support. And yes, the call was for me. I said I'd go up because I had no choice. And luckily, a resident chaplain who was also assigned the same floor said he'd go up with me. So I remember grabbing my Lutheran prayer book and a vial of holy water. And I'll never forget walking down the hallway with my colleague thinking, what am I doing? I'm going up to a room where a man is going to be taken off life support. He's going to die. And they called me to be the chaplain? I've never seen anyone on life support before. I'm, I'm not prepared to do this. I can't do this. What am I going to do? What is going to be waiting in that room for me? I felt so unqualified. I was the wrong person to do that. But when I got into the room, this sudden calmness poured over me the minute I saw George. Let's call him George. He was 62 years old, so about my age. He was told, we were told he was baptized in a Roman Catholic. He had no family, physically and mentally disabled, unconscious, probably developed pneumonia. The manager from his group home was there, and that was George's family. The, man, the manager talked about how playful George was, how his sense of humor shone through even though he couldn't verbally communicate. And after a while, I asked if it was okay to pray. And we prayed, Holy God, whose peace surpasses all understanding, we pray that you set free George from all earthly cares, pardon his sins, release him from his pain. We prayed, giving thanks for George's group man manager for the care and the love he gave George. And I sprinkled holy water on George, saying, Receive him into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. And we stood for, silent for another minute or so, and then it was time for us to leave so the ventilator could be removed. And I left feeling so privileged that I was part of such a sacred moment. In probably less, for, less than a half an hour, I went from, I can't do this, I can't, I can't, I can't, to I am so happy and blessed to have been with George. And you may be wondering, what does this have to do with Pentecost? A violent wind you can hear but not feel, tongues of fire dancing on people's heads, or people suddenly speak in a foreign language they never knew before. I mean, this has everything to do with Pentecost. We can go back even farther and say it, it has everything to do with the ascension of Christ into heaven. Last week I said Jesus needed to go up so that the Spirit can come down. This is something my, one of my New Testament professors in seminary said that I will never forget. Jesus needed to go up so that the Spirit can come down. The Spirit needed to come down to aid the disciples in walking in the steps where Jesus walked while he was on earth. Jesus walked in places and to people where others did not want to go. Jesus calls us to witness where he walked and to walk where he walked. Jesus told his disciples to stay in Jerusalem and wait for the Spirit. And boy, did that spirit come down. Not this gentle, pretty, peaceful symbol of, of a dove, but the sound of a ferocious wind. 
dancing tongue-shaped flames resting on heads and, and the cacophony, the noise of languages clashing together. The Spirit came down so I could go where I did not want to go, into a room where George was on life support and his life support was about to be removed. The Spirit came down so I could walk those footsteps to be given words to remind me that this wasn't about me, this was about George. Now, when we read or hear the Pentecost story, we may think, well, that happened 2,000 years ago. That was then, this is now. Sure, stuff like this never happens to me. But things like this do happen today. Sure, we're not experiencing that violent sound of a wind, especially in worship, because, you know, we're Lutherans. Notice how everyone is sitting there like this, nice and quiet. We don't have tongues of fire dancing on, on our heads. We don't break out into foreign languages. I mean, if you did, I'd be a little concerned. I mean, we are Lutherans, after all. But the Spirit does can come down to us today. And the Spirit is known by many names, a comforter, an advocate, a sustainer. There's a Greek word that pastors, scholars, and theologians are familiar with, a word I'd like to introduce to you. It's called a paraclete. We find this word in the Gospel of John. A paraclete can be defined as called to one's side. One who stands and walks, walks alongside you. One who gives comfort, defends, and guides you. And more importantly, one who gives strength to act on God's mission, to give courage, to prod to action. One who keeps needling us in a call to ministry. The paraclete is a perfect name for Holy Spirit, writes David Lowe's, who is a Lutheran pastor. This is the one who comes alongside us to encourage and equip us for the task of ministry. The paraclete comes down to the followers of Jesus on Pentecost because they needed courage to be equipped for the task of ministry. Now, not long after this first Pentecost, one of, one of their own betrayed Jesus and committed suicide. Another one denied he even knew who Jesus was. This is before Pentecost, sorry. The disciples ran away, abandoned Jesus in his time of need. They hid in fear and confusion after resurrection. They doubted Jesus' resurrection. How on earth can a group like this be witnesses to Christ when they seem to be wrong people? This is why the Spirit needed to come down on Pentecost. This is why we need a paraclete. And things are no different today. We need the Holy Spirit to stir us up with courage, to be an advocate, to walk alongside us, to comfort us. We need a sustainer to get through all the hardships and challenges of life. And because of the Holy Spirit in action, I've seen St. Mark's come together and mourn the loss of beloved members. I've seen St. Mark's come together to distribute food and gather coats for the needy. I've seen our congregation come together to give thanks for God's grace. But the Holy Spirit, the paraclete, has more in store for us. It's not a gentle dove, but one which shakes up, storms into spaces with the sound of violent winds. We have opportunities to be spirit-pushed into parts of the world we normally wouldn't have the courage to enter. Going into unknown places is scary. We feel uncomfortable. We don't feel qualified or well-equipped. We feel overwhelmed. We're afraid of what others may think. What if we fail? Or worse yet, what if we succeed and we're asked to do it again? If I can enter a hospital room my first week of a chaplaincy, scared out of my wits, and leave sustained, filled with the paraclete's guidance and advocacy, imagine what we, as a community of Christ, can do together with the Holy Spirit. So thanks be to God for the gifts of the paraclete. 
Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God. True God from true God, begotten of me, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Your mercy is great. Restoring God, wind and flame bring life and destruction throughout the world. We pray for those who work with wind energy, for migratory birds, for protection for land, taking the destructive fire, for forest wind energy, and firefighters. Renew the face of the earth. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Your mercy is great.
Vicky, Sue, Jerry, Ruthann, Jean, Ken, Patrick, David, Connie, Allie Baldwin, Allie, Austin Baldwin, Austin, Laura Giesemann. Laura. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Generous God, you impart a variety of gifts. Set aflame the desire to learn from one another, especially those who differ from us. Make your presence known through missionaries, peace workers, and through the outreach ministries of our synod and community. Hear us, O God. Mercy is great. Creating God, we give you thanks and praise for those celebrating upcoming birthdays, especially Kim Dickman, Kim, Laura Dorr, Laura, Olivia Dorr, Olivia, Laura Giesemann, Laura, Cole Dather, Cole, hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Life living God, we give thanks for those who have died to new life in you. As we observe Memorial Day, we remember those who died in military service. Comfort all who mourn and usher in a world where war is no more. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Rejoicing in the victory of God's, of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. Share a sign of peace with those around you. Peace. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. Fulfilling the promise of the resurrection, you pour out the fire of your Spirit uniting in one body people of every nation and tongue. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. When we sinned and turned away, you called us back to yourself 
and gave your son to join our human nature by his death on the cross. He made the one perfect sacrifice for the sin of the world and freed us from the bondage of sin. You raised him to life triumphant over death. You exalted him in glory. In him you made us a holy people by sending upon us your holy and life-giving spirit. All glory and thanksgiving to you, Holy Father. For on the night before he died, your son Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup. When he had given you thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you, for this is the blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, loving God, recalling your great goodness to us in Christ, his suffering and death, his resurrection and ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate our redemption with this bread of life and this cup of salvation. Accept our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, which we offer through Christ, our great high priest. Send your Holy Spirit on these your gifts of bread and wine, which we, which we receive, which may be to us the body and blood of Christ and that we, filled with your Holy Spirit's grace and power, may be renewed for the service of your kingdom. United with Christ, with all who stand before you on earth and heaven, we worship you in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing, honor, and glory be yours, here and everywhere, now and forever. Amen. And as Christ teaches, we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Jesus was always the guest. In the home of Peter and Jairus, Mary and Martha, Joanna and Susanna, he was always the guest. At meal tables of the wealthy where he pled the case for the poor, he was always the guest. Upsetting polite company, befriending isolated people, welcoming the stranger, he was always the guest. But here today, Jesus is the host, and we are the guest. Those who wish to serve him must first be served by him. Those who want to follow him must first be fed by him. And those who would wash his feet must first let him make them clean. This is the table where God intends us to be nourished. This is the time when Christ can make us new. So come, you who are hungry and are thirsty, for a deeper faith, for a fuller life, for a better world. Come now, for the banquet is ready. Body of Christ given for you. 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 Body of Christ given for you.
Please stand if you are able. And may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you, preserve you, and keep you in God's grace. Amen. bread and cup we have tasted the new heaven and earth where hunger and thirst are no more send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection that through our lives all may know life in jesus name amen amen so go with confidence to proclaim and live out the gospel of god's love may almighty god father son and holy spirit be with you now and forever amen and our So go out and serve the Lord with love. Thanks be to God.